Hello everyone, this is AK with AK's Garage and today Nissan Altima. As you can see the valve covers all taken off everything. This head has already been to the machine shop and and a new head gasket has already been put on. Um, I already put the cams in, torqued those down already. Head is already torqued down. So this is a 2013 Nissan Altima head gasket job. So you have to take this head off, pull these screws out on the back side on the end part of this cover here. It's a few, it's a few of them in here that you gotta pull off in order to take the head off for it to come up. Okay. And at the, um, when you're gonna put it back on, there's a um, there's a rubber seal that's on this piece here. So I don't know if you can see it down there. I'll try to get some light down there. This part right here, there's a rubber seal on the back back here that, that goes into the head. It kind of sticks into the side of the head. You got to make sure that goes on. So when you're going to try to put this on, this is in your way. So you can't like slide the head straight down with that seal there. You got to pull this back a little bit uh, to get the head to fall down on there with this here because this is going to be in your way. Now, you could... I saw one guy on YouTube, he took something here, kind of pulled it back a little bit. That way when you go to put this head on, you kind of start to, you put the head on, you got to lower it down, but you got to be back to your, back that way a little bit while you're lowering it down. And then when you get down towards the little pin, the dials, then you pull it, then you pull it to your, your left and then drop it down on the dials, okay? But... But after you do that, and you get that all on, and you try to put the timer chain back on and everything, you're going to run into an issue. This is a 2013. So when I went to try to put the... Um, when I went to try to put the uh, timer chain on, trying to get the gear here uh, on and get it lined up with the chain and everything, I ran into an issue. I couldn't get the chain around it. I couldn't get it lined up, and it was it was just uh, it's a little annoying. You can't get it lined up, and um, another thing that I ran into about it is I can't get this I can't get this cover off. This cover does not come off easy. You can't just pull off a few screws and then pull it off. It won't come off. It it'll, it'll still be sitting here. I've been trying to work it and work it off and nothing. So you actually have to take the bottom portion of the oil pan off because I think there's another screw. So that's what I'm going to try to find. If there's an, uh, it has to be another one in there or it's dowels on the bottom of this. And even even if it was a dowel on the bottom, you couldn't pull this off and go that way because then you're going to hit the, the oil filter housing. You're not going to make it past that. So you have to take off the, the bottom layer of the oil pan and then take the second layer of the bottom of the engine apart it's, uh, uh, off. That's a, that's a lower oil pan and then the second layer of the oil pan you got to take off in order to get to this cover, to get this cover off. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going we're gonna to pull off this, get all the screws out the bottom, peel that off to get down there. So I can get this off, get the engine timed up, because that's what I—that's the only reason I'm doing this, is so I can get the engine completely timed, and I feel confident about how the engine is timed. I did not want to pull the chain up. I seen one guy pull the chain up and wrap it around here, but there's not a lot of there's no one showing anything on this 13. So here I am. The 13 had a bad head gasket. It was blowing water out of the reservoir. When I took it off, I found out why this thing has that problem. So, the, the actual block has a slit in between each piston on here, right? The slit actually has, it allows antifreeze to pass through that little slit to the other side of the motor. So, each piston in the middle of each piston has a little slit, very small. Well, on on most engines that there's no slit there that's a solid piece there so no water could slide through that area and it and then the the gasket mating surface of the uh, head gasket lays down and has more surface to lay down and be tight on there and it won't allow this to happen 
The reason that these things is doing that because there's that little slit in between each one. It wears the gasket down in that area right there, and it just spews the water up and across, and and the water and it it just allows that um, the uh, compression to be pushed over into that area. And when it pushes over into the area, then it pushes the water out of the reservoir. And you're wondering why you keep losing coolant. You're losing coolant because of the poor design of this Nissan engine. If you look it up, everyone is saying these engines blow head gaskets. Man, I done drove some cars for years and never blown a head gasket. I have a old 82 Nissan that I never blew a head gasket. I cracked a head, but I ain't never blown a head gasket. Never. That doesn't make any sense. This is piss poor design in my, my world. That's what I believe. I mess with so many different cars and I see this kind of issue. It doesn't make any sense. What what made that design smart? And you and why make a slit in between each one of them? Honda don't do it. Honda is the one that has most of the engines with the coolant around the cylinders like that. It's just it's it's I, I didn't I didn't enjoy that part. It really made me mad. Because if I was designing a motor, I would have known better than that. Because you don't have no mate. The mating surface for each piston is so small. When we sit here talking about uh, mating surface with the head gasket, it is, it's, it's too small. You're going to run into this issue again. This is why they keep blowing. I bet you if you get this just a little bit of warm, then the head gasket, the, uh, head, gasket uh, the head will warp, and that's a wrap every single time. But what I did. On on uh, on some of these head gases that I do, um, I spray it down with the carpet sealer. I would spray it down with some carpet sealer before I put the head gasket on. I spray the head gasket down, let it dry with the carpet sealer, and then put the head gasket on. So um, so you get an extra sealant basically on there. So you have the actual head gasket, and then you have the gasket sealer to back that all up. So I put that on there, and I'm not saying that it's you know the best now nah, I, I don't know I haven't had none of that uh, the cars that I put it on is the ones that always have this issue you know there's a, a, a GMC or Chevy a Chevy um, 3.8 or something like that you know uh, it'll have head gasket issues at times so I put that on those and it works well so anyway what I'm gonna do today is you're gonna see me actually working on this today trying to get those bolts and screws out down there and um, that's what we do. Bolts out, and then try to get this cover off. That way, I can make sure my engine's time, and I feel confident about it. And we'll move on. Oh yeah, one more thing. Here is the head gasket, the one that came off the car. Okay, this is what I want you to see. Now look at this. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if the lighting comes out right. But uh, if you look at this. You see the black line going around, right? That's the mating surface on there. See, all over here is mating surface, but when it comes over here, look how small the mating surface is here. Look, this little piece right here is the mating surface for the pistons. If you look real good, you see the little line that goes through the middle right there? That's where that slit is that's in the block. The slit is in the block, so antifreeze goes past this little slit right here. But look at the mating surface. Look at the baited surface. Look how much it has. Come on now. Be real. Look, this is the one that went out. So if I can see that look, see the line there? See that? Right there. That is a burn, that's a burn line right there from the antifreeze and stuff like that. That's the burn line. It was crossing over right here. Uh this this piston right here, this the one that was having the issue. This the piston that was having the issue. That's uh number two. This is number two. Piston number two. Look at the other side there. Look. It's the same thing. Look. Look at the mating surface. Look, you got this little line in the middle here. But then the mating surface of each piston, or, or should I say chamber, each chamber, it has just an itty bitty spot right here. And it, so it has a little it has a little a little raised area right here. Barely, barely. No, I mean you can't man. This is this is this is the reason. This is bad design, bad design. So, like I said, what I did is, uh, of course, I, I bought a new new head gasket and I sprayed it down with some copper sealant, 
a uh, head gasket copper sealant and I sprayed that down I'm not saying that that this makes it not ever happen again that's not what I'm saying I just did that for my reassurance my own my own self my own so as you can see you see that burn line right there I know you see it see that burn line look at that that's where it was leaking at so so it would the compression will come up push across here go into the coolant and then push the coolant out of the reservoir now this should be most cars this is all one solid right here solid so instead of it coming being this small it would be it would come all the way up both of them will come all the way up and it would have a race this I don't even like the gasket style on these I will show you more <clears throat> so let's look at this this head gasket right here if you look at it okay this head gasket is made by Jaguar okay all right this this head gasket and what this one is doing is sitting cool it uh, out the uh, at the tailpipe okay now if you look at this one this one has the same design on here as you can see it has it has like a little line here in the middle see that it has a little line here in the middle but if you look at the engine you see this this is Jaguar look there's no slit in the middle of this where antifreeze could pass through you see if I pan out you see how the antifreeze goes around the pistons see that so it doesn't have a it doesn't have antifreeze passing across this little piece right here that Nissan has a little slit right here in the middle where antifreeze pass right here and it's not that deep man it's it's about it's really it's really not that deep it's it's not that deep but it has a slit here here there on each one what's the point of that this is a Jaguar I don't have it this Jaguar doesn't it's not sending it back through the coolant it's sending it out the tailpipe Now look at this. Made in surface, and you send a cooling across this area right here. This is gonna make this thing blow every single time. You got pressure building up from antifreeze here, and also the compression building up right here. And if this lifts just a little bit, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. So anyway, I just thought I'd give you the the differences on the engine block in case you don't know what I'm talking about. You see that block over there, it does not have a slit in between each piston. This one does. And as you see, that's where this one failed. So, just wanted you to see that. Okay, so you see I'm down here now. And in order to get this timing cover off, of course you gotta take all the bolts out that's going around here. And then when you do that, it still doesn't come off. So I took all those, I took the ones off here, going around, it looks like that'll do it, but it doesn't. Uh, you got some that's hidden down here. And you got one that is hidden right there. You see I took those two there out. You gotta take those. Uh, this one that you see there, that one I, has, I haven't taken out. Uh, I might have to take that out now because um, I have to move the second layer of uh, oil pan here. And um, also you have some that's in here. So that one there that you see there, that one, I already took that out, it's loose. So yeah, you gotta take that one out. And there's one hit right there, gotta take that one. And then all these on this back back here, you gotta take all those out. Not the ones holding the black cover there, but these other ones you got one big one there one two three that one there four uh, because this this whole bottom second layer of oil pan here it has to be moved because the this cover it may have like a dial pin or some a dial in the bottom here somewhere maybe I'm not sure I won't know until I popped it off uh, but and I also think there's another screw that's in here 
that I can't see until I move that second layer of cover. So I move that second layer of cover and then um, I should be able to get this cover off. And the only reason that I'm trying to get this cover off, which this car is fighting me on this right now. The only reason I got to move this cover is because I can't confirm my timing for sure. I do not want to put it together and not be able to confirm my timing. I want to see all my marks and make sure I'm at all my marks. I want to see that time of change sitting where it's supposed to be. I want to see that cam sprocket <clears throat> right on there. I want to see my marks before I say I'm done and I get this car back. Um, so that's what I'm going to work on. I'm going to get that down right now. I'm going to remove all those bolts. So like I said, we have uh, those two I showed you. You got that one, that one, and then these here that you see on the back. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one there. That one, that little small one we won't touch, we won't touch, and then you got these here. And <clears throat> you have to move the AC compressor, two bolts here, and this mount right here. I'm gonna move that bolt there and that bolt there. I'm gonna move those. And uh, that should release. That should release it. And I'll be able to drop it down and get it out, out of my way where I could check it, clean it again, because then I gotta clean all this, all this old silicone. You gotta clean all this old gasket stuff off, off of here, and it's gonna have to do it on the top in order for me to put that back together so it won't leak, which is a pain in the butt, but. I'm going to get this done. It's going to take me a little bit. So I should be. I don't think you have to move this. Uh, this pickup. The oil pickup tube here. Which is like made of plastic. Which I don't like that neither. Because you know this plastic is going to get brittle. You know you're going to spring a, oil, a leak in it. And you're going to run a, wonder why your oil pressure is low. It's because it's leaking out of this plastic bull crap right here. Why do we use plastic? Why? Why can't we use a tube? This don't make any sense. It could be the metal tube. A loom tube or something. Why plastic inside the engine where oil going to deteriorate it over time? Haven't we have we not learned that yet? We have time over time and time and again we have constantly seen this plastic deteriorates inside the engines. We got valve covers on BMW. We got the um, oil. It's called uh, uh, God. What is that thing called on Dodge? On the V6 engine Dodge, they got a plastic piece. It sits in the middle of the engine. It's made of plastic, and it, it loses oil pressure because of that. It, it, the oil pressure sender unit is on there where it shows the oil pressure. That thing cracks. You have an engine light saying your oil pressure low. We have seen it time and time again. Why are we putting plastic inside the engine where the oil is? That don't make any sense. Are we asking for the engine to die? Are we trying? We, we know that the, we know, are we doing this so we have to do the repairs. Or for somebody to sell the car and get another one. Why are we doing this? I don't. I don't understand. Stop putting plastic inside the motor. It's dumb. You're not saving anything by doing this. You're not saving anything. You you can't be for that tube to be in there. It can't cost as much as this right here. All this design that went into this. Come on, man. You're not saving no weight. The tube will, wouldn't weigh anything if it's made of loom. I guarantee it. This ain't carbon fiber piece. Come on, man. Let's cut this out. Stop putting plastic inside the motor manufacturers. Stop it. This is AK. Let me try to get these bolts out. Okay. So now I finally got it off. You can see after trying and trying to get this thing off. And all I want to do is get this off. But I can't get it off because... When you try to move it off, see this little bump here? This bump here is going to hit the housing for the oil filter. And you're not going to be able to get it past that to get it out of that dial pin here or the dial pin back over here. So, now I got it free on the bottom. And it took some time to get it. I could not, after I took all the bolts out, I absolutely could not get the glue that's going across here to break free. It would not come off. I did everything down up under here to try to get this thing 
to come free in order to have the space to get this cover off. That way I can get in here to double check my time and to make sure everything lines up correctly. That way we can move on to the next level. So as you can see, if you look in there, you see that gear comes all the way down here. That's touching, that's connected to the um, uh, the, the oil pump right there. That's the gear for that. So this housing is not actually attached to it down here. Go down, this thing here is the pump. So that's what that chain is attached to. So we're moving this whole cover out of my way. Now I'm able to get that thing off. So we'll move this. I'm, gonna remove, I'm going to remove that and then I'm going to remove that and then time the motor up and then clean all these pieces up get it re-glued and get it all back in but in order for me to get that off like I did because you're going to struggle you're going to struggle trying to get this glue off the the, uh, the glue that they use on here oh, it holds on really really tight almost like Honda Bond it feels like it uh, but whatever they did, they whatever they put on there, it does not play around. So what I did is I took I took my old trusty crowbar like this, and I went all the way down and tried to get on the edge of it. I tried the edge first. I tried the edge over here. I couldn't get it to break loose. Then I tried it on the back part. And I couldn't get it loose. Then I came back over here and I did it again, and pop, it came off. I've been struggling trying to get this off for a while and I could not get this thing to break free. Finally I got it to break free. Now I can move on and do what I want to do. So hopefully I can have this done and um, have this all cleaned up. I guess another day or so, get it all cleaned up, get it all re-glued with Honda Bond. Um, here's my Honda Bond. And you gotta either order this online or just go to Honda. But I like this stuff. This this doesn't play around. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna get that tackled. And you see, I got my own little suspended system here. Because in order to get that bottom cover off, you can't put no jack up under there to hold the engine up anymore. So you need to come up with something to keep the engine in the air. So you see, I use the existing bolts that go in here. Put the chain over that. Put my strap on there, and that's holding the motor up. And you know, I ran it through a couple times because this is not as strong as anything else. All this is torqued in, all that's ready to go. As you can see, you can see that's the cleanest part on the car because it's already been to the machine shop, it's already been cleaned, and everything. Uh, so I'm getting ready to get down there, pull that piece off on the bottom. Uh, pull off this other part of this cover and then la la la. Hopefully I get it all cleaned up and ready to go Okay, so I got the cover off and this is what it looks like with the cover off as you can see And like I said, you have to you have to move this house and this whole bottom oil pan thing and I drop it you See I have it dropped down and this, you actually have to take this all the way out because now you got to clean all the way around the whole thing. Same thing on this piece because you got to re-glue all that, all that. All on the bottom right here, you got to clean all that. So this needs to be completely removed from the engine, cleaned all that stuff, put it back in. That's what I'm getting ready to do now. But uh, So you have to move this in order to get this cover off. Because you're not going to get the cover off because... Because of this, these right here go down into the bottom cover. This part goes down into the bottom cover. This part goes down into the bottom cover. And of course, you have these dial pins. There's one here, and then I think the other one is right here, but it's still inside the engine. So you have to move that bottom cover because you actually have to you have to drop that other piece down from here it needs to drop down away from this and then this slides out because other than that you ain't gonna get it get it out also you got to replace this seal these two seals a seal right here a seal right here 
and then a seal right here. It's O-rings, O-ring, 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 and then this weird little thing here. This is hard. All these needs to be replaced before you put this back on. Okay. Uh, so now, if you look here, you see my line. It's lined up over here. It's lined up. You can see that. It's lined up. You see it's a little slack here. But once I go and put my uh, my tensioner back on, it's going to eliminate that little slack there. Okay. And if you go down here, you look, you see, I'm lined up here. I don't know if you can see it, but if you look, you see the little dot that's on there? Can you see that dot? So you see I'm lined up on the dot, on that key. And then uh, up here, uh, there's a dot right above this here. And this it's a dot right there on that gear. So those are lined up. Uh, so all that's lined up. Uh, this chain right here is still in the same spot. It just goes to the. This just goes down to the uh, oil pump. You know, that's nothing. Okay, so that's still lined up. I didn't have to mess with that. I didn't have to break that apart. Okay, so as you can see, you got to pull all this apart in order to get that cover off. And that's like I said, this is to confirm my timing and make sure everything's in, in there right and you see just the other uh, o-ring you have to replace right there it's that one that one and then the ones at the bottom so you got if you look in here you'll see there's a where is it at right there see that hole there there's two holes over there that you have to replace down there so gotta replace that stuff and then move on from there but as you can see I got work to do I got a lot of cleaning to do now I got all my timing marks lined up and uh, the cam is lined up um, but in order to get now in order for me to get this cover off now from the angle I'm in is that the engine needs to go up further for me to get this thing free now so I need to work on trying to figure out how I'm gonna get to get this motor up a little higher so I can free this thing and get this thing out so that's what I'm working on now but anyway this is AK with AK's garage